Hi, my name is Steve. I'm the flamingo keeper here at the Houston Zoo. Welcome to Facebook Live. Today we're going to be looking at the flamingos. We're going to feed them and talk about them. And then once they're fed, we're going to walk around back out the outside. We can answer questions that you might have and give you whatever information you want about the flamingos. All right, so let's go through the gate. This is my bucket of flamingo food. There's always a couple of geese right here. This is our Hawaiian Nene goose. And uh, they're in charge of everything. So they tell us it's time to be fed. That's what they're saying. So this is what flamingo food looks like. It's a pellet-like dog food. We put it on top of the water because flamingos eat out of the water. So they'll take it off the top. It has everything in it that they need. If you don't feed flamingos the right food, they won't be pink. They get what they need to be pink out of their food. So this has all the shrimp and whatnot they would get in the wild mixed into a pellet. And that's why they stay pink. So I'm just gonna toss this on the water. And you can see the, the way they're walking back and forth. You can always tell if the flamingos are hungry, if they're starting to head this way already while I'm up here. If they're over there relaxed and ignoring me, they're not gonna come up and eat. Right now they look like they're hungry. All right, so we'll head out because they won't come up while we're in here and we'll let them come up and eat and we'll go around and look at them from the other side. This is our holding yard. We have an extra yard for the flamingos just in case we need to do some work in the exhibit and we can put them back here when we need to. You can tell by the fact that there's a big pile of dirt. We don't need the holding yard right now. So this is the back area. This is the part of the zoo that you guys don't get to see when you come to the zoo. It's how we get into the exhibit and where we keep all our food and stuff. This is our grain room. We have all the food that we need in there for the flamingos and the ducks and all our tools. This building here houses what we call the LSS, the life support system, that keeps the uh, keeps the water in the exhibit clean. It's a very complicated system that I don't operate myself. We have a whole department called Life Support Systems that does all the filtration and life support for us. Steve, how many flamingos do we have at the zoo? We have 57 flamingos at the zoo. It's kind of funny, it doesn't look like that much when you look at them, but flamingos like being in a large group. They like being crowded together. So flamingos are pink. Uh, Joe and Maddie asked that question. They're pink because they're pink, but they get what they need to be pink out of their food. As I was saying when we were feeding them before, if you don't feed them the right food, they won't be pink. So they have to get the shrimp, the, the carrot and protein that they get out of the shrimp, they have to have that. And Ginger asks, how do they deal with the cold weather? These are Andean, they're, they're Chilean flamingos. They live in the Andes mountains. They can take all kinds of bad weather they don't even notice the cold. In fact, we leave them out here during hurricanes. They all get together in the water and, and hunker together. We leave them out here during the coldest weather and they don't really even seem to notice. So in the Andes Mountains, it can be winter one day and summer the next. So they're all prepared for that. Probably if we go around, maybe they'll go up and eat. They might be a little nervous because we're standing here. They're so used to having it being quiet because the zoo is closed that they're a little more sensitive. Okay, how long do they live? Flamingos live maybe 35 to 40 years in the wild. Here in the zoo, they might live to be as old as 50. We have some flamingos in here that were caught in the wild as adults in 1983. So we don't actually know how old they are, but they've been here quite a while. Some flamingos, like greater flamingos from Africa, have lived as long as 80 years. Flamingos are funny. They're very sensitive animals and you never know what they're gonna do. They're a little bit nervous because of all the construction right now. So they may look hungry and then they don't go up and eat. So you never know, we'll see. Where are they found? These guys are from South America. So they're found in Chile from almost sea level up to about six or 7,000 feet in the mountains. Terry asked, how tall are they? Um, 
goodness, I don't know if I can tell you exactly. They're about four feet tall at the tallest. Maybe, um, maybe up to here on me. The boys are taller than the girls. So one of the ways you can tell them apart is the males tend to be bigger and heavier. That's not always true. So if we don't know the sex of one of the birds, we take some feathers and we send it to a lab that looks at the DNA and the feathers and tells us if it's a boy or a girl. And what's their favorite food? Well, they're used to eating the pelleted food that I showed you to start with. And so they'll scoop that right up. Um, we don't really get any other food for them. We could give them brine shrimp, but there's 57 of them and it would take an awful lot of money to get that much brine shrimp to feed them. So we feed them the pelleted food and uh, trust me, when they're hungry, they love it. Laura wants to know, have we had any babies? You know, we haven't had any babies, Laura, for quite a while and we're not entirely certain why. Flamingos don't always breed every year and sometimes when they stop, they stay stopped for a while. It might be that the construction for Texas wetlands and Pantanal has made them a little bit nervous. Um, if you look at the island, you can tell that we have dirt out there that's been uh, tilled up and that's for them to nest on. They actually make their nests out of mud. So every day I till that up and make sure it's nice and loose and wet. They will nest, they'll make nests, but we don't know if we're gonna get eggs or not. Let's go stand over here if we can. I know we wanna stay in the light, but I think if we're over here, there might be a better chance that they'll come up. Oh yes, so these ducks are called black-bellied whistling ducks. They're wild. They're eating the food right now because the flamingos aren't there. I do feed enough food that the ducks can have some and the flamingos will still get enough. If I think that the ducks have eaten too much, I'll come back out later and give the flamingos some more food. We see more of these ducks on a cold day. These are native Texas animals. Uh, they're in Herman Park and they're here because there's just food. So they come in to freeload off the food. But there's more of them on a cold day because they're hungrier. In the hot summer days, we won't see them at all. Okay, Rachel asked how many flamingos are there? There's 57 of them. We, uh, we would like more. Flamingos like being in a big group. And even though this is the feeding pool here where all the ducks are, we feed them in the feeding pool because the food is kind of dirty. It makes the water dirty. That way all the dirty stuff stays in there. We can drain that and clean it every single day. And the exhibit pool stays cleaner. So even though that pool doesn't look that big, they will all crowd in there and have plenty of space left over to eat. They like being crowded together. So if you look, we do have a few birds heading this way. Um, why do they sleep standing on one leg? Um, they can pull up one leg and stand on one, and it takes no energy at all for them to stand on that one leg. So it's a really uh, efficient way for them to rest. Flamingos do everything as a flock. You almost never see one bird doing something the other birds aren't doing. So if they start coming up, they'll, they'll wait and see if two or three birds are gonna go up to the feeding pool. And once two or three or four go up, everybody will go up. So you can see them kind of thinking about it. But you never know what's making them nervous. And sometimes they're just not that hungry. But I think probably they're gonna go up. Kristen asked, gonna be different colors. There are six different kinds of flamingos, and each one is a slightly different color. The, the ones that live in Florida and Cuba, the, the Caribbean flamingos, are very, very pink. There's greater and lesser flamingos in Africa that are slightly different colors. There's a flamingo called the James flamingo in South America that has a bright, almost blood red patch of feathers on their back. So different species can be different colors. Within the same species, they tend to be the same. Charlotte asks, have you ever touched them? What do they feel like? We, uh, we catch them all up once a year because they get a vaccination for West Nile virus and they get weighed and examined by the vet. And uh, if you've ever felt a feather, that's pretty much what they feel like. You have to fold their legs up and hold on to their legs um, or they'll kick their legs and they could hurt themselves. So you, you kind of wrap an arm around them and hold their legs and hold their wings closed. And um, their legs feel scaly. If you've ever held a snake or a lizard, birds have scales on their feet and legs just like reptiles do. So that feels kind of scaly. And they do bite. Uh, they can give you quite a pinch. So you want to hold them where they're not going to grab your ear because it hurts. Um, Jason asked, why don't they fly away? We keep one of the wings clipped all the time and that way they can't fly. If you clip one bird wing, when they try to fly, they're off balance and they can't go anywhere. If you clip both of them and they're strong enough, they can still fly. So we just clip one wing. So yeah, here they are. There's a few left on the island, but probably they'll all come up. 
You can see how they eat. Flamingos are filter feeders. They have a, a filter built into their beaks and they run water through it and it filters out the food they like and they lick it up with their tongue. So they make the same motion as though they're filter feeding, but they're just picking up the pellets off the top of the water. And you can see how much they love being crowded together. They really don't mind. Um, they, they, uh, when they do nest, they make a nest out of mud. They just sit in the mud and they make it like you're making a sandcastle. And they only lay one egg. So right now you can see them reacting. There's a front end loader in the construction area and they're reacting to the noise from that. So they'll probably go down. If they're hungry enough, they'll turn around and come right back up. But yeah, they only lay one egg. Sometimes two females will occupy the same nest and then you might see two eggs. Uh, what does it mean to clip away? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, sorry. Uh, what you do is uh, flamingos have flight feathers. So if you stretch any bird's wing out, you watch them fly away, the white wings on the white feathers on that duck. If you stretch a bird's wing out, they have really long, powerful fingers, and those are the primary flight feathers. Then they have ones that are a little bit weaker. What you do is you clip off the primary flight feathers. So you just, you can cut them with scissors. Um, cutting wings is like cutting hair. They can't really, they can't feel, the, the feathers are dead. So you're just cutting off the ends of the feathers. How do they defend themselves in the wild? Well, they fly away. Um, Flamingos live out in the open, so their primary defense is to run away very fast and fly away. However, if, if cornered, they will bite. They will kick with their feet and they will bite you, but primarily they want to run away. And so they're coming back up. That means they're kind of hungry today. So because there were a lot of ducks up here and because they've kind of gone out and come back up and not everybody came up, I'll come out later in the middle of the day and feed them. Normally we feed them in the morning and in the afternoon, but a little extra in the middle of the day doesn't hurt if it looks like they didn't get enough food. The way I know if they didn't get enough food or not, partly because I've been working in the bird section for over 20 years, and you just kind of get a feel over time for what they need and what they don't need. Um, and partly because I can see how many ducks are eating the, water, the food, so I'm just gonna assume they need more. Uh, what's their lifespan? They live about 35 years in the wild, probably 35 to 40. In a zoo, they're going to live a lot longer because there's, there's not as much disease and no one's preying on them. So in a zoo, they'll probably live around 50 years. How often do they eat? They eat twice a day. I feed them first thing in the morning. Well, not first thing. I feed them usually around 9.30. Uh, we waited a bit today so that you guys could see us feed them. And then I feed them in the afternoon around 2 o'clock. If I feel like they need more, I'll give them some food around noon. So I don't know that, oh, there comes one coming back up, the brave one, or the hungriest one, you never know. And then everybody else will follow them up probably. The ducks, there are ducks in here that are actually ours. There's only seven of them, so you probably can't see them now. There's one of the Hawaiian nene geese right here. They get fed first thing in the morning, and then I feed them in the afternoon. The chicks are hatched out bright white with orange feet. Cutest darn things. They look like little cotton balls with big orange feet. Pretty soon the feet start to turn gray and the feathers start to turn gray. They don't start to turn pink until they're about a year old and they're not fully pink until they're three or four years old. So it takes a while for them to get all their pink feathers. Most birds have one kind of plumage when they're chicks and another kind of plumage when they're adults. Not all, but a lot of them do. Do the flight feathers grow back? Yes, they do. Uh, but generally they molt their feathers once a year so you don't have to keep too close track of it. We know we're gonna catch them up once a year anyway. Yes, there are wild flamingos in the US. Anne asked that question. Um, there are wild flamingos in Florida. For a long time, it was thought that the flamingos in Florida were only ones that had escaped from hotels that had flamingos as decorations. A scientist recently found a flock of flamingos in the Everglades. He did some genetic testing on them and he found out that they're actually still wild flamingos in Florida. So yeah, in the Caribbean, in Florida, in the Everglades, and in the Florida Keys, there are flamingos that are wild. So the pink color of flamingos, um, you always hear that they're pink because of what they eat. Well, in order to be pink, they have to eat the right food. So the protein they use to make their pink pigment, they get out of their food. It comes from brine shrimp and it comes from other algae that they eat. So the food that we feed them has all that stuff ground up and included in the dry food that we feed them. So as you can see, they're marching one direction and then they kind of turn around and go back the other direction. 
you know, a lot of birds have uh, a display that they do together when they're going to mate. Flamingos do their display as an entire flock. Maureen asks, do they have a pecking order? Is there a boss? No, there is not a boss. When they pair up to breed, pairs will fight with each other. And, you know, obviously the big bird will probably win. But they're very, they're, they're a flocking species. And what that means is there's no real dominance from uh, one animal to another. They pretty much, uh, you can get new flamingos from a completely different source that these guys have never seen. Put them in the group and they'll be fine. They'll just take them right in. Why do they dance? Um, well, they dance, and I, I don't know exactly what you mean by dance, but sometimes they do this thing where they, they pull a leg up and put it through their feathers, or they march back and forth. That's a breeding behavior. So uh, as the flock begins to all march one way and all march back the other way, the more, the more of them that do it at once, the more in sync they are, the closer they are to starting to breed. Yes, flamingos do have predators. Lauren asked that. Lauren asked that. Um, in South America, there are large cats. You know, there are cougars in the United States. Cougars exist all the way down through South America. So cougars, um, there are other small cats in South America. In Africa, there are even baboons that will catch uh, flamingos and eat them. So they do have natural predators. One of the things about flamingos is they live out in the open. They're in these big lakes where they breed. So they can usually see something coming from a while off. They also live in very uh, bad water. They live in very alkaline, very uh, saline water. So um, a lot of, in Africa, some of the water they live in is so caustic that predators won't even walk through it. Christy asks, how many sounds can they make? You know, they make a honk, kind of like a, a goose and they make some kind of squeaky noises, but they don't have a big range of, of vocalizations. If they did, what color would they be if they didn't get the right food? If you didn't give them the right food, they would turn gray. Every new feather that grew in would be gray or uh, kind of a whitish gray. So once a feather is grown, it dies back just like hair. So it's the color it's gonna be until it falls out and a new feather grows. Why are, are they endangered? No, these flamingos are not endangered. Um, the James's flamingo in South America is maybe threatened, but flamingos generally are doing well in the wild. Oh, what birds are chirping? Well, actually, the squeaking that you're hearing is these ducks, which is why they're called whistling ducks. They sound like they're chirping birds, but they're actually ducks that are, um, they just don't quack like other ducks. There's some grackles in the background too, but most of what you're hearing is the black-bellied whistling ducks. Uh, do they have a leader? Jessica asked. No, they don't have a leader. Um, the bird that comes up first that everyone follows, it's not the same bird every time. Sometimes it's a hungry bird, sometimes it's just the one that happened to be there. So they've come back up again to eat. Sometimes you'll see birds that stay behind. During the breeding season, it's not unusual to have birds that stay on the island. Sometimes if you see just one bird, or if I see just one bird that doesn't come up, I'll make a note. You can see, I don't know if you can see now, but when you're here, you can definitely tell that every flamingo has a band on its leg. That's how we tell them apart. So if I see one guy on the island who doesn't go up to eat, I'll look at his band, I go, okay, the band, the bird with the white band that has a black 55 on the left leg was on the island this morning, I'll make a note for myself. And if the same bird is there in the afternoon and the same bird is there the next morning, I start to think there might be something wrong. Who are they related to? Flamingos are, um, they're related to water birds. They're related to geese and ducks, but they've been on their own uh, evolutionary path for a very, very long time. So they're not really closely related to anything. How many males versus females? Um, we have 47 males and 50, 47 and 30 females. Yeah, I believe that's correct. So, 57 total. I've got that wrong. Let me think. Let me divide. Hang on. I'll be with you in a moment. Um, yeah, 27 females, 30 males. Oh, type of flamingo. These are Chilean flamingos. And uh, they, uh, they come from South America. There are three kinds of flamingos in South America. Chilean, James, and Andean. And these are Chilean. So they're found in the country of Chile from ground level up into the Andes. How many hours do they sleep, Steve? 
they start to go to sleep when it's dark and uh, you can tell they'll, they'll tuck ahead under their wing, sometimes they'll even go up in the grass and sit down and they will sleep until the sun comes up. So when I come out here first thing in the morning, if it's dark, they're still in the pool and it's still very quiet, so I don't want to make a lot of noise and scare them. But as soon as the sun starts coming up, they're going to wake up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that I answered whatever questions you have. Um, please don't forget the zoo emergency fund. The zoo right now is operating without any money coming in. And we're doing our best to keep everything fed and everything happy, but we really need your help. So if you go online, if you go into our website, you'll find the zoo emergency fund. I know a lot of people are, are hurting right now, but if you've got anything at all, we really would appreciate it because we really do need the help. Uh, and join us tomorrow at 11 a.m. There'll be another Facebook Live.